Welcome everybody to Virtual City Hall School. Today I'm visiting Ward 7 and I have Ward 7 Counselor Katerina. Good afternoon, Linda. Hi, thanks for joining us. And also from Ward 7, I've got a student reporter, Joanna. Hello. Thank you for coming. So I should let everybody know that uh, at City Hall School, we learn what a counselor does and their job is to listen, to learn and to decide and to make sure we have a really good quality of life here in Edmonton. I found out some things about Katerina that I didn't know before. I found out that he likes to read. He also likes to garden and fish. He likes uh, homemade sauce on his pasta. And right now he's lucky enough to have a new granddaughter in his life. Joanna, I'm gonna turn it over to you and let's find out some more from your questions. Okay. Uh, Counselor Katerina, what is the most rewarding part of your work? Well, I think uh, after uh, 13 years, what I enjoy uh, the most is uh, reading week is, is one of the, my favorites, uh, getting a chance to, uh, to go to a number of different uh, schools. And I really enjoy uh, when classes come to uh, City Hall and uh, firsthand uh, see and, and learn of, of what we actually uh, do. So that's the fun part of, uh, of the job. Okay. Um, and what is the biggest challenge about this? Well, it, uh, the responsibility the counselors have uh, that we are, are the managers of uh, not our money, uh, it's your money, your parents' money, all the taxpayers that we are responsible to, uh, uh, to make really good decisions. And part of that is uh, a lot of uh, reading. Uh, we probably have a, a, a telephone, I was going to say telephone book, but I don't know if you know what a telephone book is at this point in time. But uh, there's, there's a lot of reading that uh, we have to, uh, have to do to make sure we actually understand uh, what we're discussing when we're passing bylaws and budgets and all those sorts of things to make sure that we uh, make the best decision possible uh, for the uh, residents of, of Edmonton, uh, regardless of uh, who they are and uh, uh, whether they're homeowners, paying taxes or not. Uh, uh, that That is really, really important. And I think Linda mentioned uh, quality of life for everybody uh, is extremely important, that we uh, get a really good balance uh, on uh, our decision making. Yeah. Um, and what did you want to be when you were my age? Uh, geez, I think uh, uh, probably a fire truck or something. But uh, <laughs> uh, I wasn't sure uh, at that time. I, I've always been interested at school uh, in social studies. I always found uh, history, um, uh, current events, those sorts of things really, really interesting. And uh, I never thought that I'd be doing what I'm doing now when I was your age. Uh, but uh, I knew that I wanted to do something with, uh, 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 with uh, social studies background, uh, uh, whether it was history or whether it was uh, politics or something like that. So uh, lo lots of different thoughts uh, ran through my mind. That's cool. Um, and what three words would you use to describe a great leader? Well, I think uh, a, a very good, uh, you've got to be a good listener. Uh, you've got to be decisive. Uh, that once you think you have all the information that's required, that you make a decision and you're able to justify it. Uh, sometimes uh, you know that uh, you're not going to make everyone happy, uh, but uh, decisions made are for the benefit of uh, everyone. And uh, once you make that decision, uh, you should stick to it. Yeah. Um, and during the, during the lockdown, what is something that brings you joy? Well, I think uh, at this point, I'm, I'm really happy with uh, the way all Edmontonians have uh, sort of accepted uh, the new normal. I know it's very, very difficult for everybody, for yourself, uh, maybe not being at school, uh, for others not being able to go to work, uh, all those sorts of things. But I think overall, Edmontonians, all of them, have been very, very uh, understanding and cooperative. Uh, and I hope that uh, after this is all over, that maybe some of the lessons that we learned uh, uh, during this period that we can continue, that maybe what we thought we needed, absolutely needed, the uh, necessity, uh, maybe shopping five times a week instead of one time a week, all those things that I hope we remember that maybe uh, our quality of life 
could be better somehow uh, with some of the lessons that we learn uh, now. Yep, that seems, yeah, that's true. And uh, there are so many caring citizens in our city. Tell us about some of the YEG care examples you've seen in your work. Well, what we've seen is, uh, especially uh, with our vulnerable population, uh, Ward 7 uh, is now sort of the, uh, the main housing for uh, homeless and people with uh, uh, certain challenges in that. And we uh, offered up the Expo Center, uh, which is at Northlands or the previous Northlands uh, site where uh, we provide services for people that are maybe vulnerable uh, to get some meals, to get some uh, uh, health facilities, uh, uh, going for them as well too. So I think that uh, Ward 7 uh, and, and everybody around it uh, was very, very uh, uh, positive uh, and happy that we actually provided that space there for our most uh, vulnerable people in the city. So I'm really happy uh, uh, about that. Okay. Um, and what do you hope we all learn or take away from this experience? And what advice do you have for children like me? Well, I hope, uh, as I said before, the experience is that uh, we realize that maybe there's certain things that we don't need to have or don't need to do uh, to make our quality of life uh, even much better. And for children, uh, certainly uh, uh, this will be your first experience at something like this. It is for, for most of us, uh, but uh, the challenges uh, uh, and things that you, you're able to learn and to do now, just as we're doing right now, we're, we're, we're talking, we're having an interview, we're having a conversation, and we don't actually have to be uh, in the same room uh, to do it. So, you know, there's so many things that we can learn from this, and I think that uh, we'll find the way that we've done things in the past will be different going into the future, and uh, in a lot of cases, it might be better. Well, thank you both for your questions and your answers. That was a great interview. I wanted to let everybody know about Councillor Katerina. He came to Edmonton from Italy when he was six. Joanna came from the Philippines to Edmonton when she was just three. So my challenge for you today is to think about newcomers or refugee families that are coming to Edmonton and consider what they might need to know about Edmonton. Consider how you might welcome them. Maybe you yourself are a family of newcomers that have come from somewhere else to live in Edmonton. I'd love to know your ideas of your experiences or any advice you have, and you can send them to me at cityhallschool at edmonton.ca, and I'll be sure to share them with Councillor Katerina and Joanna. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Linda. Thank you, Joanna. It's been fun. Yeah, it's been fun for me too. Thank Thanks. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.